<laughs> finally, finally, the replay is there. I want to talk about this replay very quick because it really learned something that was completely new to me. Well, it's actually... And I was waiting for this replay, being hyped, because I didn't want to lose the, the energy that the match just gave me. I had incredible cool teammates that were able to communicate their ideas clearly. And then I even asked them, like, why their ideas are correct, and they helped me to understand the gameplay a little bit. So I'm a Phantom Lancer, and then doing my Phantom Lancer things, I have pretty, pretty high net worth. I have a really good lane here. And the, the, the important part starts to happen somewhere around here. So I'm getting my items. Let's skip even further. I want to search this exactly. The TA rotates towards the top lane because she had a rough lane as well. And it tries to recover on the top side of the map. And now we're sitting here. I am getting my Aghanim Scepter. I'm going to get my Diffusal soon. Let's check out the last hits. So I'm on top net worth. I'm top last hits. I'm doing pretty, pretty great in this game. We're killing this TA here again. And she really, really suffers, I think. From us being here and then there's a punch and he kind of dies as well because i'm kiting the fight really really nicely and then i just get my diffuse blade from that fight and then it turns into another fight on the top side as well so all the fights that we took here on the top side have been pretty pretty beneficial for us the stormbreaker is dying a ta is on the top side again trying to recover trying to push out the waves and getting ancients and we are even able to dive her here which is I, incredible. Just incredible pressure on that TA. I said to die it here. I tried to use it in a uh, few strain drops to switch men, but it wasn't enough. And now we're thinking about the game. What do we want to do? And uh, there's an ancient stack still, but Barak clears it up. And now I'm... See this line on the minimap here? I'm communicating that I would like to play on the bottom side of the map, because my thought process is that we can take uh, Roshan, and then we can take this tower, and we can take mid lane tower, and we can control this area. And here we get into the beauty of Dota, because this is usually the right play. But we have to think about the reasons why this is usually the right play. Usually this is the right play, because I can farm Ancients as the carry, we can secure the Roche to get buildings, and we can take the farm away from the enemy carry. But all of those things are completely irrelevant in this specific game, interestingly. Because my farm is incredible already. Like, I don't need to be farming in the next minutes. I need to be fighting. TA's farm is going to be centered around the Ancients and not around the bottom side of the map. And Roshan will not help us take towers or fights better than we already do. So, in this scenario, we should be playing on the top side. And let's look at the drawing here, because Rave King communicates that, I think, to me. Um... Let's see, I hope we can see it. I hope we can see it on the map in the replay. Then I wanna scroll back and slow it down a little bit. This is what I'm communicating. Ah, and we don't see the Rave King drawing or what? There we go. If we switch to his perspective, then we can see it. So this is what he's drawing here in the map. He's arguing, no, 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 no. Um, we shouldn't play on the bottom side. We should be playing on the top side and we should ignore this bottom side and we should just contest the ancients here. He's like pinging the location of where TA is most likely going to be and then he's teeping to the top side. And now this is where it starts. So this Rave King is teeping top and I'm like, okay, I want to play with the Rave King. So I TP top as well. We get another fight on the top side. We are getting a fight against the TA who is weak right now and we can definitely kill. So we're running in here and trying to kite back a little bit. I'm just using my Aghanim Scepter here to do the work for me and suddenly we get a kill and we take the top area. We can take um, the Wisdom Rune. We can take everything here and the Barra is able to play on the bottom side. And Rave King actually had a enorm um, map awareness to demonstrate and... Um, how do you say this? Like, he, he proved that his theory works. So, he was saying from the beginning, before this fight even happened, that we should be playing against the TA, because she's weak and she's going to recover in the top side of the map. And Barra should be playing on the bottom side and just cleaning it up, pushing out the waves and be a little bit scary. So, this is exactly what happened, and I'm so, so happy that he was actually able to communicate this with me. And that was really a moment in the game where I learned something new, where I managed to um, get some variance in my default assumption that we should play in this area. And as you see, he's still in the triangle. He's still sitting in the enemy triangle and then pushing it out. 
playing gear, Barra is joining, now the Kotl dies as well. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And then we can get even more here. He's completely right, we do not need the Aegis for this. We do not need Spot and Tower for this, we just need to stomp on the TA. We kill the Pudge, we kill the TA, we own the whole map, we own the whole map basically. By playing in this area, by just, and then they, they like go end, and this is what happens. So by just identifying correctly where the enemy carry is and how we can pressure him, we are able to dominate the game way, way more. If we would have played this game as I would have thought it should be played, where we just sit on the bottom and we're taking Roche and we're taking this tower and we control this area for like, I don't know what reason more and for what item I want to farm, and then slowly try to go high ground, we would definitely not be able to finish it that quickly. I doubt that we would be even um, using our advantage in the same style that we are doing it right now. And we give the TA and the Putsch the ability to recover in their triangle. They can be playing here, they can get pickoffs and stuff like this. So, perfect, wonderful. And actually, if you ask nicely, this is another thing I found out. I was like, after this, I was like, hey, Rave King, you're absolutely correct, but I don't understand why. Can you please explain it to me further? Suddenly, they open up and they're like, cool, yeah, actually, this is what I'm thinking about. And then Muerta was like, yeah, 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 but it's actually not that we should just be playing on the top side because of the like circumstances of the farm, but it's because of the EDTA. And then I think for the whole team, those ideas, they formed, they got spoken out, they solidified, and now we can use them as an advantage in our next game. And this is the perfect example for me, what improvement looks like and what, how do you say this, the ability to change old habits and old patterns that are usually right, but need to be adjusted in certain situations. I think this is perfectly what it should be looking like. And once you have this, once you realize um, in yourself that change of um, dynamics and that change of energy, it's an incredibly cool feeling and things suddenly work, everything falls together in pieces. Um, this is maybe the wrong formulation, but everything comes together perfectly. This is what I mean. And yeah, it's just an incredible fun time to be having in Dota. So I hope for your next game, you're thinking about the things that are happening and you have patterns in yourself that you are repeating all the time, all the time, all the time. And we need those. Humans are built on those patterns and those patterns help us to put our focus on different things. But what I want you to do now is to take one or two patterns that you um, see in yourself and then I want you to think about the reasons why you're executing those patterns and then just think critically if those reasons in this specific game lead to the same execution of patterns that you usually have or if you need to adjust it to a different goal. Great! Let me know how it works for you. See you in the next one.